I think the NBA should be slightly worried about Victor Wembanyama. Yeah, I know, obviously the NBA should be worried about the 7-3 alien who averaged nearly more blocks per game in the second half of the season than the second and third leading shot blockers combined. A 7-3 alien who shot a higher percentage on pull-up three-pointers than Steph Curry, Trey Young, and Damian Lillard. But when I say they should be worried, I'm just telling you guys what Victor Wembanyama told all of us. I'm learning and I'm worried for the opponents in a couple of years. NBA FIBA everywhere. In case you've been living under a rock, just a week ago we saw France vs USA play for the gold medal match in the Olympics, a game in which France competed the entire way only for their hearts to get ripped out by Stephen Curry. And that's what Wemby had to say following the game. This might be the moment we look back on in 10 years and realize it gave Wemby an extra level of motivation that we didn't need him to have. Because I told you as a rookie, he was already the most dominant defensive force in the NBA. As a rookie, he was already hitting pull-up threes at a percentage only rivaled by the best guards in the NBA. Now he also has a legitimate chip on his shoulder after losing the Olympic gold medal match in his home country to a team full of NBA players. Yeah, things could get serious very very quickly. And there was one thing I left out when talking about France's loss to USA in the Olympics. It was the fact that Victor Wembanyama led the gold medal match in points. A match with some of the best players we've ever seen and 20 year old Victor Wembanyama put up 26 and 7. And he was so hard to guard in the first quarter of the game that it forced Steve Kerr to bench Joel Embiid. Because whilst everyone loves to mention the struggles Wemby has guarding bigger guys like Joel, which is true, it works both ways, as Embiid looked helpless trying to keep up with him on the perimeter, and this is probably a good place to start. Just how much of a matchup nightmare can Victor Wembanyama be for opposition bigs? And I'm not just talking about the tween as he pull up jumpers that he hits, I'm more focused on his ability to put the ball on the floor, using that combination of ball handling, length, and mobility to just float to the rim. That's what could make him unguardable for any five men in the league. And for him to really put the NBA on high alert, that's the next step for him. And we already saw some serious signs of it just this season, even against a guy like Nicholas Claxton. Look at Wemby with him isolated on the perimeter. He crosses one way, back the other way, and even though Claxton defends the move well, it's just those strides combined with the length, allowing him to turn a tough offensive possession into a layup. There's only one other player in the league that could turn this into a layup. His name is Giannis Antetokounmpo. So you can only imagine the things he does to centers not as fluid as Claxton. Victor again. Oh, oh my goodness. Stop it. How yes, thank you for the timeout. Stop that. Most people will focus on the ferocious dunk Wemby threw down on that play, but I'm more focused on just how quick that first step is. Using Trey Jones as a smoke screen to throw off Richards before bursting down the lane and throwing it down. Or in this play against Kessler, where the ball initially gets poked out, but that only helps him as he then has more space to attack a backtracking Kessler and watch the in and out dribble before throwing it down. He makes it look like it's a nerf hoop. And continuing to improve his handle and ability to take centers off the dribble, like in these plays, is what I want to see Wemby continue to focus on. Because it's one thing to have a handle as a seven footer, but the potential for Vic as a driver is so high because you have to respect his jump shot, which gives him more opportunity to blow by you, and not only does he have a handle, but he's got legitimate speed and freakishly good mobility for someone his size. So he's able to attack angles at speed that you rarely ever see from big men. And in general, I want to see him nail the basics over the next year or two. I know it's fun to talk about the freakish highlights, the dunks, the blocks, the crossovers, the pull-up threes. And trust me, I understand, because that's what I want to see as well. And even on simple plays, Wemby 
can turn anything into a highlight play just because of how freakish he is athletically. Like, he had no reason to throw that down with that much force. But when you think about the best players in the world, the Jokic's, the Lukas, the Giannis's, what makes all of these guys so great is in addition to the crazy highlight plays they make, they all have a consistent form of offense. This is the next step for Victor Wembanyama. What will be his trademark form of offense? It's great to be able to do everything, but what shot is he going to when the team needs a bucket during a close playoff game? Now, based off the glimpses we saw in his rookie year, there's a very, very special big man from 50 years ago that he has a chance to try and emulate. I'm of course talking about Kareem and his sky hook. And whilst Wemby hasn't really shown off a sky hook, he's shown off his own kind of version of that. Watch here as Wemby comes out and sets the screen for Vassell. He gets the ball in the pocket and watch the one dribble spin and finish off the glass. I'm sorry, but how are you stopping that? All it took was one dribble and a spin move to get to what is almost like a layup. And he went to this a few times during the season, like here against Clay, where it's actually really nice footwork to bait Clay to go one way before the spin back inside and the soft finish. It's almost like a combination of a finger roll and a hook shot because his arms are reaching around so far that it's not even really a regular hook shot. It's somewhere in between a layup and a hook shot, which to me sounds like a ridiculously high efficiency shot if you can get to it consistently from just taking one or two dribbles and elevating. And just to prove this is the kind of shot and move that could work against any defender, how about on this play against the four times defensive player of the year, Rudy Gobert, where he beats him baseline and puts that extra bit of elevation on the shot to avoid Rudy blocking him. Just imagine the floor for Wemby's game if he has a reliable hook shot and continues to improve as a driver. Because we already know he's getting 10 to 15 points a game off lobs and dunks off cuts. So you have an easy 20 points a game off baskets right near the rim, without mentioning the free throws, and then teams will have to account for his three-point shooting, his mid-range game. Oh, and what makes Wemby such a great offensive prospect isn't just his scoring ability. In fact, the most underrated part of his entire game is his passing. He was a little turnover prone during his rookie season, but that's just incredibly common for rookies, particularly rookies playing on poor teams with very high responsibility. But despite that, it's not about the fact he averages four assists per game. It's the passes he makes, which very few other centers are capable of making. Just look at him here in transition. Get the ball from Trey, and it's that initial drive which collapses the defense before disguising the pass perfectly. And Wemby will make one or two two really great bounce passes or touch passes a game that show the level of skill and processing he has, which I think is the biggest indicator of his passing being an elite skill. Because it's one thing to throw a nice pass out of a double team or when you can see the play unfolding, but Wemby has those passing instincts that you see from the best passing bigs like Jokic or Shangun, making those decisions in a split second. Even when you look at some of the plays he made for France playing alongside Rudy Gobert, Bear, where it was Wemby who was better at throwing an entry pass than damn near every guard on that team and every guard he played with in San Antonio. And I was going to say if only he could pass to himself in the post, but I've got a feeling Chris Paul will do a pretty good job at that. Now, if you did make it all the way to the end of the video and want to see more content like this, consider subscribing. It's free. Dropping a like on the video would be much appreciated. Either way, most importantly, have a great day. Bye.